Hello guys, let us look at uh, elements of financial statements. I want to discuss the types of financial statements that we have. Types of financial statement. The types of financial statements. One, we have what we call statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. This is what was previously called balance sheet. Then uh, we have what we call income statement. This is what was previously called profit and loss account. Three, we have what we call cash flow statement. Four, we have the statement of changes in equity. Statement of changes in equity. This forms basis of the major financial statements. This forms basis on the major financial statements. I would want to discuss the elements of the first two financial statements. So elements. So let's start with the first one, which is the elements of balance sheet. Elements of statement of financial position. And we have said this is what was previously called balance, balance sheet. In a balance sheet, we have three main elements. The first one is assets. The second one is liabilities. And the third one is capital. We shall discuss each one of these elements, assets, what are assets, we shall discuss what are liabilities and what is capital. The second financial statement that I want us to discuss is elements of income statement. This is what was previously called, this is what was previously called Trading, profit, and loss account. It has two major elements. A, we have what we call the revenue or income. And then we have expenses. So let us discuss what are assets, what are liabilities, and what is capital. Uh, let us look at uh, what are assets. Uh, so what are assets? Assets are economic resources. These are economic resources controlled and owned by an organization as a result of past event. So what we are saying is that assets are economic resources because they are high terms of value. Uh, they must be owned and controlled by the organization to mean these assets must belong to an organization. And they must also be used by the organization in terms of control. Then these assets do not just occur in an organization. The assets have been purchased or have been donated to the organization. That's why we say assets result from past events. They are a result of a past event. 
that is a past event, something must have, have happened in the past for these assets to be there in an organization. Let's have characteristics of assets. Characteristics of assets. Assets have uh, three main characteristics. One is that assets are economic resources. Assets are economic resources. That is, they are value. Assets are value. In other words, these economic resources, to mean when you dispose assets, uh, you can actually get some value. You can actually get some funds out of these assets. So we say they are economic resources. We also say uh, that in their characteristics, assets are controlled. Assets are controlled and owned. Assets are controlled and owned by a business. For instance, if we have land, this land, for it to be said to belong to a certain organization, it must be owned by that organization in terms of title deed. If it is a motor vehicle, it must be owned in terms of a logbook by the business. Then it must be used by the business. That's the element of control. The third characteristic is that these assets have resulted from past events. These assets have resulted from past events. When you say they have resulted from past events or past transactions, we mean that these assets did not find themselves in the organization naturally. Something must have happened in the past for these assets to belong in a certain organization. Uh, the last one is that assets are used to generate They are used to generate or to aid in generation, to aid in generation of revenue. So here we mean that any asset you have in the organization, it will qualify to be an asset if that asset is being used to help the organization to generate revenue. In other words, the assets are used to help the organization make sales. The assets are used to help the organization serve customers. And then we have sales as the income or as the revenue. So these are the main four characteristics of assets. They are economic resources because they are value. They are controlled and owned by business by the virtue of being that they belong to the business and the business is using these assets. They have resulted from past events by the virtue of being that these assets did not naturally find themselves in the business. Something happened for them to belong to that business. Then they help the organization. They either generate directly or aid or help the organization to generate revenue. We can have an example in a, in a, in a school setting, a classroom, which is actually a building. This classroom will be helping the educational facility or the educational organization to generate revenue by serving the customers. Hence, it will qualify to be an asset. Let us look at the classifications of assets. Classifications of assets. Assets can be classified into two broad categories. One, we have what we call the non-current assets. We have what we call the non-current assets. These were previously called these were previously called uh, fixed assets. And the main reasons why these assets were being called fixed assets, it is because majority of these assets were immovable. They were fixed on the ground. They couldn't be moved. So these assets, they were referred to as fixed assets. Only for accountants 
to agree that even assets that some assets that are said to be fixed like motor vehicle still are movable. Hence, the name was changed from fixed assets to non-current assets. And the non-current assets are defined as assets that are expected to be utilized in an organization to be utilized in an organization for a period of more than a year. So these are assets that are expected to last in an organization for a period of more than one year. And we have examples, examples, we have examples. Examples of these assets, we have one, land and building. We combine land and building because building do not exist where there is no land. Most of the times, buildings are attached to the land. So these ones, we combine these to be one category, land and building. Even though when you are doing financial reporting, you can report separately land, which is land that does not have building, and you can also report the other land that has building. So majorly, we combine the two and say the value of land and building. Then the second one, we have what we call tools and equipments tools and equipments. Tools and equipments. Under tools and equipments, here is where we find tools that are used in an organization. Tools like armor, chisels, and then you have equipments like generators. Uh, any equipment that you use in an organization falls under tools and equipments. Number three, we have what we call motor vehicle. We have what we call the motor vehicle. We have motor vehicle. Motor vehicles, of course, you know what are motor vehicles. And this also sometimes includes the motorcycles. These are as both all motor vehicles and the motorcycles sometimes are classified under motor vehicle. Four, four we have what we call furniture and fittings. We use the name furniture and fittings because at times you realize that if you have a furniture like a door, the door cannot exist without a door handle or a, or a lock. That means the lock itself is metallic, it's not furniture. So the lock is a fitting. The lock of a door is a fitting. You also find there are some metallic elements in the door, like nails. Those ones will now be classified as fittings. We have the furniture, which is actually the timber, and we have the other part, which is actually a fittings. Uh, last and not least, we have what we call plant and machinery. Under plant and machinery, these are not biological plants. Plant and machinery refers to those machines that are fixed on the ground, that are grounded and fixed on the ground. And I would give you an example. If you have industrial generators, industrial generators, they will have a component that is fixed on the ground. That is, the, comp the generator will be as if it is a plant that has roots. Hence, we call them plant and machineries because of the fact that they have some component that is fixed in the ground. And that component is what makes us, we call, to call these big machines, plant and machinery. And I would want to say, that when I talk about plant and machinery, here I'm not referring about the biological plants. Even though biological plants still are assets, especially in an organization that deals with planting of trees and selling of timber, they'll still be assets. But when we join them with machines, we simply mean those industrial machines that have to be fixed in the ground. These are the five major examples of non-current assets. The other category of assets is what we call the current assets.
Current assets, uh, these are assets that are expected to last for a period of less than a year. in an organization. These are assets that are expected to last for less than a year in an organization. And majorly these assets include what you call cash and cash equivalent. That is those assets that can easily be converted to cash. So we have examples. We have examples here. In the examples, we have one, what we call cash in and. Then we have the second example, cash at bank. The third example, we have what we call debtors. Debtors, these also are called accounts receivable. We have what we call stock. And uh, five, we have a uh, prepaid, prepaid expenses. When you talk about cash in hand, we call it cash in hand because cash is in the pocket. We assume in the pocket, in the cash book, in the office. So we say this is cash in hand. This is the money that you have in the office that is not banked. We also say cash at hand because cash is at, is at a certain place which is at the bank. So here we use at, cash at, at bank. Then we have debtors. Debtors, these are customers that have bought goods on credit. Customers that you have sold to them goods on credit. And you don't expect these customers not to pay you for a period of more than a year. You expect these customers that you have sold goods to them on credit to pay you within a year. The same way, the cash you have in the office or in the cash box, you don't expect that cash to last for more than a year. You expect to have used for, in a, for a period of less than a year. The same thing, for cash at bank, you expect the cash at bank to be revolving, so you don't expect the cash cash to last for more than one year. We also have stock. When you are buying stock, you don't expect the stock to last for a period of more than a year in, a, in your organization. So you expect to sell the stock for a period of less than a year, then you can acquire some, some other stock. And stock is also called inventory. We also have what you call the prepaid expenses. These are expenses that you have paid in advance. These are expenses you have paid in advance. So you don't expect those advance payments to last for a period of more than a year. You expect to utilize the uh, advance payment with that within a period of less than a year. Hence, these are the main current assets that we have in, that we use in accounting. And these are the main and current assets that we use in accounting. For you to understand accounting, you need to master this to be in your fingertips. You need to master this to be in your fingertips. And that will become easy, it becomes so easy for you to master the other topics, especially ledgers, because you shall be knowing what is an asset. When you talk about a debit and a credit in ledgers, you shall be understanding what we mean and uh, what is an asset. So it is very key that you memorize this and you memorize this to make your accounting life very easy.